from, the lobsters would start from about June, July. They would land about September, and then would change over to the velvet crab fishery. That would last about Christmas, the back of Christmas, and, and then change over to the wilks from February through to about June. So you have three things to do over the year, so it keeps you busy. See, it's 17, 18 years on my own fishing from here. A long time. Granddad before you? Yes, he fished creels. Made them, made them out of wood. So things have changed, it's all steel creels now. It's just to be, they had to hold a hand, but hydraulics just took over. It's the hull and then the roller table, everything comes up over the rail tee. It's completely different where if you had the wooden creels now, the wooden creels wouldn't stick, wouldn't stick it. The roller table will come up and just would break them. 18 years I've been doing that now and it's been looking after, looked after that there, a wee bit of ground, it's a good bit of ground. If it wasn't for putting back the wee ones, there'd be no fisher. Oh, that's all I had the future there, that's all the back now, you see. I'll see you next time. This is the bait bag here. So you put your bait in there, which would be sort of, you know, any sort of old fish frames or fish offal goes in there. And uh, when you put up your door, and you there's usually a bungee on there, it'll be quite far tighter, not usually like the gap there tight, and that closes the neck of the bait bag, the gap. So it does, so the stuff can't, the crab or the lobsters can't take the bait out the top. So the only way they can get out the bait is to walk up in the eye of the pot. And because the top of the eye is lying down, the gap there, they can go in. But once they get in there, if they try to get back out, they can't because they just come up against this, you know, because it's like lying down, so it's like a, a one way flapper type thing, you know. So they, go, they can go in and they can't get back out. That's the theory. When you get the female comes up, UV notch the tail, and then you put her back, and then that lasts for five years. And she, she produces every year. Maximum five thousand pound fine for, for, for holding her. We tend to change the shell, we're just a new shell, and it's, it's slightly larger each time. So, um, like the, the V will eventually get smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually it'll just like a, like, a, like a small indentation in the tail. You know, um, sort of gets to that point you just cut them again because you know it's one that's ready for the beanot steak, you know. Yeah, that's beanot stuff here. Ah, there are females with eggs on them. See here. Well, you can see the benefit. If you didn't do it, you would probably after, like, if you stopped doing it, it would take about two to three years, you'd start to probably see everything start to go downhill, like, you know. But, uh, but is, it, is, is the v-notching kept everything sort of at a, a constant level? Well, I mean, the effort's increased and the catches are sort of holding their own, like, so it's sort of... It's, it's, it's working like you know, it does work like you know, compared to what it was years ago. When I start off, you would have got 30, 40 kilo a week. Now it's up to 150 kilo a week with stuff in the same cradles over 18, 17, 18, 18 years. It's a massive, massive difference. You can earn a good living, but there's just nobody seems to be wanting to come up behind us. So I, don't, I don't know why. There's nobody, there's no young ones interested in fishing. I love it because you can be in every night in your own bed and home with the family. You're not doing 10 hour, 10 day trips, home for a few days and away again. So you couldn't be in that sea, no traffic, you know. Just to see the birds. What more do you want?